In this video, we are going to complete a practice question on the preliminary design of roads, making use of the stopping site distance formula. I'm going to underline the key points as I read out the question. An engineering student is driving on a level roadway and sees a construction sign 200 metres ahead in the middle of the roadway. The student strikes the sign at a speed of 56 kilometres per hour. If the student was travelling at 90 kilometres per hour when the sign was first spotted, what was the student's associated perception reaction time? How far back should the student have first observed the sign to be able to stop safely before hitting the sign? The text that I underlined in the previous slide are now shown here in bold. Judging by the information we have been provided with, along with the information we must calculate, we can infer that we must use the stopping site distance formula as part of our solution approach. The stopping site distance formula is shown here as equation one. It has two components. A distance for which the driver will perceive and react to a object on the road and a distance in order to brake to a speed of zero. However, in this question, the student strikes a sign at a speed of 56 kilometers per hour. Therefore, the final velocity is not equal to zero. We must then use a more general equation of the stopping site distance. This is equation two. Here, we can calculate a distance for the car stopping which includes two components and again a perception reaction time distance and then a distance to break. However, in this more general equation, we have not specified that the final velocity must be equal to zero. Therefore, in the first part of the answer, we will use equation two to find the perception reaction time of the driver. This perception reaction time is directly related to the distance in order to perceive and react to an object. In the second part of the answer, we will use equation one to calculate the safe stopping site distance given the TPR calculated in the first part of the answer. We are going to divide this question into two parts. The first part is to calculate the associated perception reaction time of the student. In this instance, the student hits the sign at a final velocity of 56 kilometers per hour. In the second part, we're going to find the stopping site distance, which is the safe stopping distance for which the student will hit the sign at zero velocity. Therefore, the student will just stop before hitting the sign. The stopping sight distance will tell us how far back the student should have first observed the sign in order to stop safely before hitting the sign. Let's draw a picture of what's happening. In part A, the student is driving along a road. It sees a construction sign 200 metres ahead. Here's the student. At the point at which the student hits the construction sign, it is traveling at a velocity of 56 kilometers per hour. However, we want to find at what distance should the student have seen the sign here in order to stop by the time it hits the sign. Therefore, we want the final velocity in part B to be zero. And then we want to back calculate the distance 
of where the student should have first seen the sign. This is the stopping sight distance. In this slide, we have summarised the information that we have available to us to solve the problem. Some of the information has been provided to us. Others we know through standards. We also must know the parameters that we are asked to find. In part A, we know that the final velocity cannot be zero because we are told it is 56 kilometers per hour. In part B, we know that the final velocity must be zero because in part B, we are calculating the distance required for the car to have first seen the sign in order to stop when it reaches the sign. Therefore, the student must have stopped as it hit or reached the sign. Thus, its final velocity must be zero. Now, in both cases, the roadway grade is zero. Why? Because the roadway grade is the slant of the roadway compared to the horizontal. And in this instance, we know that the roadway is flat or a level roadway, therefore G is zero. D is the distance of the roadway that is of interest to us. In part A, we are told that this distance from over which the student first sees the construction sign and then hits it is 200 meters. In part B, we don't know what D is because it is actually the SSD, which is something that we are asked to find. BF is the final velocity. This is the velocity at which the driver is at the object. In other words, it's also at D equals D. We know that the final velocity in part A is 56 kilometers per hour. We know in part B that we have set it to be zero. V naught is the initial velocity. This is the speed of the car at the start of the roadway of interest. This is when the car first sees the construction sign. In both instances, the car first sees the construction sign at 90 kilometers per hour because that is the speed at which the student is traveling. Now, we also have known information provided to us from the standards. The Osroads Guide to Road Design, Part 3 for Geometric Design, provides us with these values. This is the acceleration to counter the friction and weight forces and is general to cars. However, you may notice here that they are of a different sign. Why is that? Don't forget that we are using two different equations in part A and part B. In part A, we are going to use the general equation. In part B, we're going to use the SSD equation. Now, you may remember that in the general equation, Vf is not equal to zero. However, in the SSD equation, Vf is equal to zero. The main difference is, in part A, when using the general equation, the general equation was derived from kinematics. In kinematics, we know that when a car is slowing down, it has a negative acceleration. In other words, it's decelerating. That's why we have minus 3.6 meters per second squared. However, in part B, we're using a special SSD equation. In that equation, we have no VF. VF is equal to zero, in other words. Because VF has been removed, the equation itself has left out a minus sign in front of V naught and also left out a minus sign in front of A. It is essentially 
just eliminated the negatives so that both terms should be entered as positive in that equation. We will compare the two equations in a future slide. Perhaps this will make more sense. And let me just show you where I have gotten the value 3.6 as the acceleration due to gravity. Now, here I have open our Osroads geometric design guide for 2016. Go to table 5.3 to find the values we are after. Now, in the standards, this value that we have been looking for, A, is actually written as D. It has the same meaning, but it just has a different pronumeral to explain it. If you look here, it's called the coefficient of deceleration. That goes to explain why there is no negative in front of all these values. That's because it is already considered deceleration. Therefore, the equation that you would put this value into has already factored for that value needing to be negative. So which one is the right one for us to use? You might first note in this table that this value 0 0.26 is supposed to be used for major highways and freeways in flat terrain. Now our road is in flat terrain. However, it is just a roadway, it's not a major highway. Therefore, using our engineering judgment, we will use the upper value 0 0.36, which is used for the 90th percentile on most roads. This value would be reasonable to use in our question. Here I have both equations that we will use displayed. I just draw your attention to the fact that in the general equation, the final velocity is inside the equation. But in the SSD equation, because the final velocity is assumed to be zero, it is not present in the equation. But more than that, there is a negative sign in the general equation, but that negative sign is not there in the SSD equation. Now, for that negative sign to be removed, a negative sign must have been removed somewhere else. What other value could have a negative sign removed? In this question, it would either be 2, G, A, or G. Now, the people who have created the SSD equation chose A to have its negative sign removed. Therefore, what does this mean? We're dealing with a situation where a car decelerates in order to brake. Therefore, its acceleration is actually negative because it is decelerating. Therefore, the acceleration would be a negative number, say negative 10 meters per second squared. However, in the SSD equation, because we must balance out the negative, the A in the SSD equation should be positive. For example, 10 meters per second squared. Just remember, in the general equation, your A term should be negative. In the SSD equation, your A term should be positive. Let's go ahead and do our calculations to find the answers to these questions. In the first part, we need a solve for TPR using the general equation. I'm going to substitute in the values that I know. I know D is 200 meters. I know V naught is 25. Note that we must convert VF and V naught into SI units before calculating. We don't know TPR. That's the value we want to find. We know VF. We know V naught. 
Now, before I continue, I can see that I can cancel out g, the acceleration due to gravity, because it actually should be eliminated due to the fact that we're multiplying g by 1 over g. So continuing with substituting values into the equation, 2, a is minus 3.6. Remember, in the general equation, a is a negative because we're decelerating, and g is 0. Therefore, rearranging this equation, I get 200 minus 15.56 squared minus 25 squared over 2 times minus 3.6, which is all over 25. This is equal to 5.87 seconds. Here I have a typed out summary of the calculation we did on the previous page. Let's go ahead and solve for part b. In this instance, we want to set the final velocity at zero, and therefore we can also use the SSD equation. Note that we could have used the general equation, equation two, and have set vf as zero. But here I'd like to show you how the SSD equation can be applied. Let me substitute in the values that I have. SSD is equal to 25, TPR is 5.87 plus 25 squared, G is cancelled out again, 2 times 3.6, note that A here is positive, plus G which is 0, that gives us 233.61 metres. So there you have it. I have solved for the stopping site distance that the student should have first observed the sign at in order to have stopped safely, i.e. to have been not travelling at all, to be at velocity equals zero at the sign so there you have it. We have found the solutions to this question. Thank you for watching this video and good luck.